Hello and welcome to the PH video blog. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Mercedes AMG GT and why I think the one behind me might possibly be the pick of the range despite being about the cheapest GT you could buy. Now, cheap is a relative term. Base price is just over 97 grand. The one you see behind me is about 105 with a few options on it. Nothing particularly outrageous as press cars go. So this is about as close to a bare bones GT as you could get. Now then, we know a bit about this car already, of course. It's an evolution of the SLS. It's got a four litre twin turbo downsized V8, downsized in relative terms for AMG, and it would go up against, I guess, a Jaguar F-Type R, maybe an Aston Martin V8 Vantage, inevitably a 911, things like that. But this particular car, I think, has some interesting features. So we'll cut to the chase, I'll get on the road, and I'll explain why. So let me expand a little on my theory of why I think this entry-level AMG GT might actually be the pick of the Mercedes AMG GT range. Now, it doesn't exactly look entry-level, does it? Now, it doesn't cost entry-level money either. It's still a hundred grand car, remember. But the S model, which everybody would naturally gravitate to, is only 10 grand more, which at this level isn't really that much more. You could throw a few options in this car and be at 110 grand in no time whatsoever. So, why do I think this car might be the pick of the range? Well, it all kind of comes back to the launch, really. Now, on that, we only had the S versions to drive. In fact, they were edition one, so they had all the fancy aero kit and all the rest of it. And the S has got a load of extra kit on it, including things like two-stage adjustable dampers and an electronic locking differential, it does, of course, have more power. It's got 510 horsepower as opposed to the weedy 462 of this car. So it's a bit faster, it's a bit more high-tech, but I think the character is actually quite different as well. And when I drove that S on the launch, one of the things that struck me, especially when we drove it on the track, was a shifting character for AMG. Now, and this is going to get geeky, so bear with me. The electronic locking diff which was fitted to that car is also on the S version of the Z63. You don't get that kind of bite that you get from a mechanical locking diff. A mechanical locking diff is always there, you don't have any choice, it's always playing its part. So when we drove the S on the track, yes it had loads of traction out of the corners, but it was surprising how unwilling it was to go sideways or even show a hint of going sideways, it just wants to grip and go. It was a faster car, yes, more able, but to me it lost a little bit of that entertainment value that is so important in AMGs. So I was very keen to drive a car with a mechanical diff. I was also keen to drive one with the passive dampers because one of the engineers on the launch was telling me all about them. They're from a company called Multimatic, which if you haven't heard of them, they're a big OE equipment supplier to manufacturers. They also supply motorsport teams. And these dampers, they're called dual suspension spool valve, apparently. They sounded really fancy, they sounded really cool. Because what he was saying was, because they machine the valve rather than just use a shim stack, it gives them flexibility to really hone the damping that they want. And here we are, we're in an absolute bare-bones AMG GT with the passive dampers and the mechanical diff. What can I tell you? Well, the ride isn't shy, but then it's not in the, in the car with the two-stage dampers either. But let's just say, at low speed, I think this is a... A pretty burly car, it feels, you can probably see me being jiggled around on this bumpy road here, but it's it's not a comfortable car, but then I think I don't, in a car like this I don't really mind, it's not an S-Class, so why should it ride like one? One thing's for sure, the damping is very, very good, even on a really bumpy road like this, it deals with the high frequency bumps brilliantly well, it's got superb composure, the car corners super flat, and it's a taste thing, but I just like the feel of passive dampers more. They just have a kind of consistency. You know what they're going to do. And that's why I like the diff as well. The locking diff, you know, can do all sorts of clever things, but it's all talking to the systems. It's all working in conjunction with the ESP and the gearbox and the throttle and all the rest of the stuff. So, yes, it's clever, but sometimes you just want to predict what the car is going to do. And I think that's why... Personally, again, I prefer a car set up like this. This seems to me closer to the kind of 
raw spirit of the AMGs that I like, so the old C63, the SLS on which this car is based, has so many shared components. So, and I really like the SLS, I know it was a little bit uncouth at times, it had some rough edges, but again, that's kind of what I liked about the car. So, in this basic AMG GT, I was hoping that we would uncover some of the spirit of the SLS and at first impressions it would seem that may well be the case. Now of course the big difference between this car and that car is that the GT has got the new school downsized turbo engine and we have of course on various other cars had a lot of soul searching about engines getting smaller, going turbo, wringing our hands over what this means but are there any complaints about the way that, that engine makes its noise? I don't think so. Are there any complaints about the power delivery? Absolutely not. I keep coming back to the fact this is the entry level car and it's got 462 horsepower and it never feels anything less than blindingly quick. This is a ferociously rapid car and if you were thinking that maybe the throttle response was a bit mushy compared with the old engine, okay maybe there's a tiny tiny little lag in response but for a turbocharged engine I think AMG has delivered an absolute blinder here there is never any sense that you are waiting for the excitement because it is always there it's on demand this is a phenomenally exciting car and you know on a road like this it just again it just has that kind of rawness that I think the more polished S Kind of, it's kind of thrown out the baby with the bathwater a little bit, so there's an uncouthness which I think is good in AMGs. I think that's what AMG is about. Do I have any complaints? Well, yeah, it's not perfect. The dual clutch gearbox, which was also used in the SLS, is better, but it doesn't have exactly it's actually the same gearbox that Ferrari uses in the 458 and the 488. But it's calibrated a bit differently, it doesn't quite have that immediate response. It works well in manual mode, but every now and then it does this stupid multiple downshift thing. You know, you pull one clip and it sometimes goes down two or three. Really annoying. I'm not a massive fan of the steering either. It's still hydraulically assisted apparently, but it doesn't really feel it. And I don't know whether it's to make the car more accessible, less macho, but it's kind of, it's quite twitchy. It's twitchy and light, which is not a very nice combination. It doesn't give you massive confidence. I mean, maybe it's something you would get used to with more time in the car, but overall as a package, I really, really like it. I think it's more exciting than an equivalent 911 you could buy for 100 grand. I mean, what would that be? That would be a kind of fairly tricked up Carrera 2 or something like that, or maybe a C4. It's got a similar character to a, an F-Type R, I suppose. I suppose you may consider an Aston Martin V8 Vantage, but that's quite old-fashioned now compared with this. I think there's a nice combination of character and rawness and kind of old-school muscle car in this, which AMG has always done very well. Now, to really explore what it could do, I think we need to get to a track. Handily, that's exactly where I'm going. time on this Blyton Park circuit and what can I tell you <laughs> this car is savage I can't you know this is the entry level AMG GT I don't think you're left wanting for speed noise drama or anything like that I mean just listen to this thing it's amazing um, on track how do we feel about this basic setup so the mechanical diff the passive dampers well, I've got to say on that bumpy braking zone into the chicane there damping feels absolutely superb it's really really fast it's fluid it's consistent I mean the standard car is not bad but I don't think there's any shame in that and they haven't got a diff there so that's mechanical locking diff coming into play this car's definitely more sideways than the standard GT one of the things that strikes about the standard GT is quite how much traction it has it just wants to grip and go it's got a 
an electronic locking differential of course and it's all geared up for traction what I was hoping about the basic car with its mechanical diff would be there was a little bit more playful and uh, so it would seem it's, it's not quite as kind of aggressive as some old school AMGs but it's still definitely a lot more interactive and rear driven a bit more like the old SLS in that sense so no bad thing there in my book I think this is a blinding car it's absolutely superb it, astonishingly quick as well that's 110 miles an hour there in that short straight and I think this as it felt on the road this basic AMG GT it's just a little bit more raw and raucous than the standard than the, um, the full fat S version that's no bad thing in my book I think it makes for a slightly more AMG feel to it AMG has always to me been a bit more raw maybe a little uncouth compared with some of the rivals and I think that's a good thing I think that's part of its identity and I think with this GT you get more sense of that than you do with the the more sophisticated S version I love it I think it's brilliant I mean I'm very intrigued to find out what the what the new GTR is like but that to me has got a lot of the stuff the kind of the four wheel steering, the gadgetry, all the electronics. It'll be a quicker car, of course, but as a raw driving machine, I think this is absolutely superb. I love it. It's a fun and exciting road car. It's a really effective track car. And remember, this is the entry level one. Impressive.